Hello folks. So tonight I'm going after M45, the Pleiades. This is exciting. I've never captured this object in color before. And right now my mean readout is pretty high, even though I'm only doing 30 second exposures. Um, and uh, uh, I put my gain back to 139.21. I was doing um, gain zero on broadband before, but uh, there's issues with game zero, and I get vertical banding. I'm just going to do everything from now on in game 139. And and I don't care if I'm a little overexposed. I, I'll i make do. I, I think I can deal with it. At least I hope. And let's take a look. I'm only doing luminance so far. Hopefully I'll, I'll be able to do RGB as well tonight and have it done in one night. And you hear my guiding right now. I'm passing. <laughs> the object is... It's still too low. I'm passing through tree branches right now. My guiding is terrible. Let's, we'll come back to this. And, and look at... <laughs> I shouldn't be making a video yet, but I just thought I would, because you can see what I'm dealing with right now. I, I'm passing through tree branches, and if you look closely, my stars are a little warped, and that's because... It, it, let's see if... Zoom in even more here. They're warned because I'm passing through uh, my power line as well. And when I pass through a thick power line, I notice it tends to elongate, sort of stretch out my stars. I see that every time. And you can see that here with this one and that. So I, once I get past this, the power line and the branches, I think I'm going to have a pretty clear view of M45. But I just thought I'd show you this because... Not everything is looks great, you know. Sometimes I only, I only, most of the time I only show you stuff that looks really like my, my best stuff, and I, I don't show you the other crap I deal with. But this is what I'm dealing with right now, and I think hopefully in a half an hour, uh, I'll, I'll have a clearer view of the sky. And by 9 p.m., I'm hoping. So I started too early, like I said, so I'll come back later. Okay, so I wound up capturing three hours of data, two for or two hours of loom data, and twenty minutes each of red, green, and blue because um that's uh, my friend Jason's guideline. He's had many images of the day, so I trust his advice. You want to go six times as much loom data as RGB, so that's what I did. Two hours is six times as much as twenty minutes, and uh, let's see. Uh, this is what my luminance data looks like. Let's see, this is uh, red from the red filter. This is from the green filter. And this is from the blue filter. 20 minutes each of RGB. And the data, and I was dithering every third frame. I, I did one minute exposures on RGB and 30 second exposures on luminance. Uh, and uh, it, the data, in my view, looks very clean. Uh, so I didn't run a background extraction through any of this process. I, and it's surprising because I live in a red zone, very bad light pollution, but I did put a, a two-inch CLS filter in front of all my other filters. So that, I think that really helps out a lot with light pollution. Uh, for broadband, I don't use that. I don't need it for narrowband, of course. So that's what my data looked like. And, you know, because I only captured three hours of data, I wasn't expecting much. And after I combined the RGB, that's what it looked like. I guess I wasn't expecting all that green. I was kind of hoping for blue right off the bat. But, you know, running a SCNR, that pretty much gets you down that blue path. Now it's starting to look more blue. And... Uh, Hang on one second, let's look at my final image. Uh, let's put this off to the left so we can still see it. After I added uh, the luminance to it and did more processing, you know, working the colors a little bit, I uh, I think I, I'm not sure if I increased the blue or not. I, now I can't even remember, but I'm always trying this, trying that. I don't have a, a set map, roadmap I follow for processing, so I'm like, whatever works. Try this, no, that didn't work. How about this? And uh, I went through so many iterations before I finally got to something like, okay, this might be passable for three hours of data. So 
I, I might revisit this still. You know, I, like I said, I got plenty of time to come back to it, so I didn't really get the the the, the detail like I would like to see. I just didn't have enough nebulosity to really get that stringy kind of detail that Pleiades is known for. Uh, but uh, for three hours, I'm satisfied with it. The, the the fraction spikes, I think they, they give it that extra pop. I don't know. But again, that's my preference. Other people hate them. I love them. And I, especially for bright stars and like these open clusters like this one. And I want to show you one more thing. In my other video, when I was showing up all my friends who had image of the days and top picks, uh, in top picks, I, I scrolled right past it. But Adam, who uh, is a friend of mine on Facebook, also had a top pick, and so I missed him. I would have mentioned him earlier, and of course, it's actually M45, the one I was just capturing. I wanted to show you uh, the kind of detail you can get. I mean, this was definitely deserving of, of being a top pick, and, you know, I only put in three hours, but Adam got in 17 hours on this, and, and you know, when you have that much data, then you can start to pick apart and get all that extra cool-looking detail that, that he got. This is phenomenal. So it kind of puts mine to shame, but you know what? It's comparing apples to oranges. I, For me to get 17 hours on this object, I would probably have, need about four days because of all the obstructions I deal with. And I don't know if I'm willing to just spend four days on a broadband object. You know, I don't know. I'm not expecting to get a top pick with mine, of course, because I tend to go short on broadband because to me it's just fun capturing stuff quickly and getting as many in as you can before the moon comes back. So, anyway, good work, Adam. And uh, that's all I got to share, folks. I'll see you later.